Hey guys, today's message is about choice. I had this dream last night, um, so I may quote a few scriptures, might not, but any, well, yeah, I will. One of them is Joshua, choose ye this day whom you will serve, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Um, but it's all about choice, and he kept, you know, Jesus kept dealing with me all night long, this dream. Choose his authority, not ours. Choose his will, not ours. Choose how we entreat people at the body, how we love our brothers and sisters, how we even treat the world, guys. It's all about choice, you know? That's why I put on a lot of those abortion sites. Choose life, not death. Jesus, choose Jesus. Choose life, not death. You know, the could go with the LGBT garbage. Choose not to have, you know, sex outside of, you know, all kind of crazy sex. All this sexual deviant stuff, you know, everybody's having a fit over the Super Bowl garbage. Well, what do we expect? But it's how we choose, you know, to get in our soapbox, which I do sometimes, you know, I've got some. Cell phones is one of mine, but just people are so obnoxious and rude on them. But I'm still going to pray through that, honestly. But it's how, you know, what choices do we make when we're in line at Walmart and the cashier is kind of fumbling and stumbling and do we choose to just, you know, maybe they're old or maybe they just don't know how to do it or maybe they're new or just whatever. What do we choose to do? How do, how do we choose to react? What church do we choose to go to? Who do we choose to sit under? What, what are we feeding ourselves Spiritual is way more important than the, than the flesh, but we also have to make choices of where we're going to eat and all that too, and what we're going to cook and everything else. But the spiritual thing is where I'm at, guys. What choices are we making? Are we feeding our flesh? Are we choosing to pray? Yes, corporate prayer is an awesome thing because we all get together and we just it's a becomes a forest fire. But if you're not on fire when you get there and you haven't gotten stuff in your secret place and you haven't met God and you haven't asked God and you haven't chose the right things to do and you haven't chose to spend that time with Him, getting direction, leading, leading and guiding and directing, the whole, feel, being filled with the Holy Ghost, all the things that go with it, if you haven't got that, you just kind of walk in and fall into the church. What do you expect? You know, it's like, a lot of this mega mania garbage, you know, why is this stuff so successful? People, be, you know, talking about all the prosperity and the money and the, yeah, all that. That's, I get it. That's all necessary. Okay. Um, I know a guy, I know a, a guy that's overseas from India. And if he told me, he said, man, I'm going to, next time I saw him, if he said, I'm going to walk home, I'd follow the dude. Because I'd be like, man, that's thousands of miles across the ocean. What are you going to eat, sleep? Go to the bathroom. How are you going to get there? A long way. We'll follow him. No, you have to have a plane ticket. You have to have a hotel. You have to have a rental car. I get it. Okay? Not being narrow-minded, guys, on that. But the American culture is just bent on this. And that's why do you think some of them are so successful? Because they flash a bunch of stuff and say, look what, you, look, look what God can do for you. Portray them as a big ATM. You put $100 in, you get a hundredfold blessing. You put $10,000 in, you're going to get 100000 back. Man, it's almost like a gimmick scam, guys, kind of. Almost. I hate to say it. So who are we choosing to say? We choose to listen to me today. Or, you know, maybe your favorite preacher. You got to be really careful what you're choosing, guys. told me when I wrote this second book, which I'm still having to revise it now, it's a long story, but it's been out since March. But I have to take care of some stuff to revise it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. I do have a, 
a, a version of it that I can email you if you want a free copy. I just email it. So you just give me, shoot me your email address at Youngstrom at Steve. Youngstrom Steve. No, sorry. Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. So, but anointed, appointed, elected, chose. He said, he chose, were his vo he chose us to be his voice. God chose us to be his voice. He chose his son to be his voice. We didn't choose him. He chose us, guys. That's how much he loved us. But we have to make that choice to let him in. Lay aside every weight so he's going to set us. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. We have to make that choice to die out, guys. When somebody wrongs us. When somebody really, you know, I, I mean, I've got a few instances. Some even kind of current. People really just, man, dogged us. But that's okay. What do I do with it? I'm still praying about some of it. But I got a choice to make. Get agitated about it, spout out something, say something back, give them a piece of my mind. I'm not swinging the pendulum the other way and saying I'm gonna be a doormat either and just stuff it. That ain't gonna help either. I'm still praying about it. But at the same time, I'm asking God for direction because that's my choice. It's my choice. What do I do? What do I do with some of this stuff? Bring it before God. God, I need a little bit of an answer here. I need some 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 direction, you know. And I, and you know what? Trust. We have to choose to trust Him for the outcome. We have to choose to listen to Him, and we have to choose to follow His path. Guys, it's a lot of choice, 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 choice. But He's asking you to choose the right thing. Choose to do the right thing in His sight. Cain and Abel had a choice. Of offerings. You know, what are we choosing, guys? Our marriage, do we choose the right spouse? Do we choose the right place to live? Do we choose the right job? Do we choose the right place to go? Sometimes the choices God just gives us, and we have to just follow and be obedient. We have to choose to be obedient. Okay? Three years ago, it started to happen in random cities. First one was, you know, Italy, Texas, and then Little Elm, and then the last one was Lahitan, and it's in Pennsylvania. I had to Google it. Been in normal Illinois, little towns all over the place, all over the Stillwater, Oklahoma. We just had to get in the car and go. He told us to, and there were certain people he told me to meet. Some, he did, some I had details, some I had very, very little detail. Then said to go. The last one to Pennsylvania was 12 days in the car. Not in the car, but, you know, hotels, cars, drive. And it's like, man, God, most people get to fly where they're going. But I had to drive. A lot of, a lot of, you know, wasn't, wasn't my choice, but it was his choice because everything he told me to do happened specifics just like he told me to do and then some other really cool unspecific stuff because I just I just went because that's what he told me a long time ago he's going to tell me and my wife to just get in our car and go somewhere certain places people and things and he highlighted that you know different people different places so but we have to make those choices guys to be you know obedient trustworthy trusting him uh Praying, communicating with him. Prayer is a really big, important piece. Bringing it before God, whatever the situation might be. Not always asking to say, hey, fix it or whatever, you know. Just even some just direction. Choosing to listen. There's so many choices, guys. Choosing the living word. Choosing to let the living water flow out of us. Choosing to be full of him. Choosing to be just like Jesus. In spite of the world, in spite of the stupidity of the Super Bowl, halftime garbage, in spite, of the, in spite of the political realm, yes, we need to vote. Yes, we need to pray for our leaders. Yes, we need to step in the gaps. We don't have all these ungodly, ungodly laws in our land and unjust and just all this garbage that we have to live under. But we don't have to do the, get involved in, I mean, man, that, 
the 2016 debate, man, it was almost like a smear campaign, guys. I almost a lot, you know, just a lot. I just, everybody was talking hogwash. <clears throat> and then everybody, people had to say, I'll forgive them, you know. Well, <clears throat> maybe if we choose to not speak when we're not supposed to speak. Why it says in Ephesians, no, it's Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct your paths. So you have to make that choice, that constant, constant choice. You know, your wife offends you. You know, usually it's a wife and a husband because you're the closest, of, co of course, you know, and you can kind of go to be at church one minute and bickering the next or something stupid, usually a parking spot or whatever, uh, you know. Mine is, you know, I'm, you know, I try, I don't do anything to be, to be this way, but I'm just like, man, I'm out the door. My wife will give me a 30 second look and it's like, got a spot, blemish, wrinkle, you know, something on your shoe, everything from shoe to the wrong belt to the spot on my shirt. It's like, man, I'm just trying to get out the door. So I'm still praying through. That's what I'm on. I got, you know, I'm praying through with my attitude. She means it real well, you know, she wants me to go out presentable. Good quality, I just, mine's probably, I guess, a bad quality. I just kind of, you know, throw something on and I'm out the door, you know. So, but I got to make those choices. And so it's the little things too, guys. That's why the Bible says the littlest foxes spoil the vine. You know, choose to abide in him in everything we do. Even when people wrong you. Gonna happen all the time. Look at Jesus. Don't you think he took some offense? The enemy wants to just, man, blast that and portray that and our sins that we've committed. Some seen, some unseen, some coming up. That's, you know, he wants to just highlight them and blast them and just promote them. So we can start. So he can keep us under the gun and under, under chains and bondages and, and just to make those bad choices. Paul was a good example. One day he was Saul killing Christians. The next day he was one. The dude had a bunch of baggage, guys. Sin baggage. Murdered people. Stood there and held Stephen's coat. Right. Man, he had some not so gruesome memories. He killed women, children, men. Just. Or had him murdered by others, you know, or whatever. It just gave the orders or whatever. How, you know, every every detail of it. But so it's like, man. But the enemy wants us to just because of some type of our poor choices to try to destroy us, keep those hooks in us, keep us down, keep us, you know, out of the will of God. Well, now you can choose to bring them to Him and say, man, God. You know, me, I'm more like Larry the Cable Guy, just messy Marvin. God, it's, man, this, man, I kind of really screwed up here royally, Jesus. What do I do? And mean it. I'm at the place now where it's like, man, I don't necessarily want it fixed. As much as I want the open heart surgery, I want it out and gone and dealt with and so I can move on so it's not a hook so the enemy can't use it against me later on. So it's just not there. I have to choose forgiveness. I have to choose to be forgiven and I have to choose to forgive. Choice, 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 guys. So many choices in life. I'll end with this because it's pretty a hot topic at the abortion issue, okay? Everybody's like, man, but look at how much things are changing and I can foresee Roe versus Wade being overturned soon, honestly. Thank God. But changing the law is not going to change people. So the church has dropped the ball. Guys, we slap labels on them. Yes, it is murder. I get it. Yes, it is a poor decision. 
Yes, it's one sin covering up another. Usually a sin of fornication, sex out of wedlock, whatever you want to call it, however you want to, a lot of it. Now, maybe not all of it, but <clears throat> some for convenience. There's all kinds of different things. But are we really trying to help? We're not going to help everybody that saw this show one time. You can't rescue every puppy in the pound, okay? So be strategic, but you can get some of them. His children separate the wheat from the tares. Some people are just not going to listen. To you, they don't listen to Jesus. They're not going to listen to the Holy Spirit. They're just not. You have to be okay with that. But the ones that are, that we really, you know, be strategic. That's where the prayer comes in. That's where the choice of prayer, you know, getting in deep in the prayer closet. So I'm going to end with this because I don't want to make this any longer. Um, but it's all about choices, guys. So what are you going to choose today? As for me and my household, I'm going to choose to serve the Lord. I'm going to choose to lay aside every weight and sin that this way they beset me. I'm going to choose to try to practice a little, this is an old saying, but a little neology. Or however you pray, I'm going to get, try to get it from my source, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. And you should too. So really, the, the, I want to encourage people now with this. Just make these right choices, guys. Doesn't mean they're easy, but make the right choice. So love you guys. Talk to you soon.